unless you're here to help walk away pulling out your phone to record how dare you like that was such a total violation and whoever has that video on their phone bro i really want to look into this camera and tell you to fuck off who are you talking to right now jb who is it you think you see oh, oh. Oh, you clearly don't know who you're talking to so much i am not in danger skyler oh, i am the danger oh, a guy opens his door and gets shot you think out of me okay. no. I am the one who knocks. I am I'm not okay. I am the one who knocks. Oh yeah. Cash out. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm actually gonna be doing a story time. Story time is giving story time. Oh wow, it's giving like I'm in a decent mood. Like the last few days I've been like, okay, like, you know, maybe there is a cure to depression. No. Anyways, um, just kidding. I'm, I've been thinking a lot, and I did get a few emails to create it, Joy. But that's not what this video. I'm probably gonna do that video tomorrow. Um, but I've been thinking a lot, and I want to talk, tell a few stories about like the worst panic attacks I've ever had in public, bro. So this panic attack was. Let's see. I think it was 2019. <laughs> I think it was 2019. 2019, like I said, yeah. But um, yeah, so it's 2019. I was oh my god, how old was I in 2019? That's so funny. Let's see. I was 22 years old, and yeah. Yeah, so the Caps won the World Series, and then they did this huge event downtown. And one of my former colleagues actually invited me to go with her to the event. So I'm like, okay, so it's like a parade, basically. Now, this is like, honestly, with my anxiety, I stay in the house. And so she called me and she was like, yeah, if anything. And I told her, like, honestly, I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm an introvert. That's something I would say. This is before I was like open about, you know, my mental health and all that other stuff. This is like when I was like a bit I guess ashamed so I just told her like I'm an introvert like I don't go out she's like oh no, no that's fine that's fine um I'll be there with you and if it gets overwhelming we can leave like she's she's an older woman she's older than me and she's like very understanding very motherly I think she I don't think she has kids but I think she's very motherly and so she's like it's fine if you get overwhelmed we can leave and she's like we're gonna be together we're gonna have good vibes she's like you know, most people approach me and tell them, like, you're an introvert or whatever. They're like, oh, it's just because you you're not out with the right people. But, like, uh, no, that's not, why. <laughs> that's not why. But, like, um, back then I was more willing to go to things like that. Now you cannot, if there's an event and it's going to be more than 15 people, count me out. Like, that's why I'm, like, grateful for COVID because now, like, celebrities are considering people like, for, I've never been, I've only been, I've never been to a concert. And I love certain people and i would love to see them in concert but honestly i would faint like it's not giving that and frankly it's very but i'm grateful for covid because since covid celebrities are more considerate of um you know people who don't want to go out so there's like virtual and like you know the show will probably be streamed later on like a website or or you know you you know you know what i'm saying anyways there's virtual events now so, but back then, you know, it was the, the Capitals, the, the Nationals, they just won. And they won the World Series. And I'm like, oh, it's given that. Like, it's given. Um, and while I was, and when I was, um, before I went to college, I had, like, a scholarship program with the Washington Post. And I actually got to meet some, well, I actually met the entire baseball team. So... I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, girl, in my head, you know, me deluded. I'm like, girl, I know them. So I'm going to go say congratulations. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what I... I knew it was going to be a lot of people, but I did not... I, I thought I was going to be cool. Like, you know, it sounded like a good idea. And honestly, I just... I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I was thinking I want to go out and live a life, you know, have a, you know, a normal, quote unquote, normal life, live my life, have fun, you know. And then the plan was to go get some food afterwards. 
And so she's like, yeah, yeah, don't worry, da, 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 da. And I wanted to go. I mean, it's not, we we don't win the World Series. It, like, we don't. Anyways, <laughs> so that's why I wanted to go. I'm like, oh, this is an event, honey. I got to go. Um, So we get there. When we get there, like, we're in the we got there kind of we got there kind of late like probably 15 minutes before the parade started and so with that said everyone was out there already so we were like in the back and i'll try to find pictures as far as where we were but we were in the back and like it was crowded but it's like we were like in the part of the crowd where it was thinning out originally when we got there it was thinning out because i'm like oh and i'm like oh this is cool now that we're here kind of late everyone has already picked their spot there's people who have great views standing in trees standing on statues it was it was fun like and my colleague she's very social she's one of those people that's very very social it's funny because like i always get along really well with people who are extremely social and you know what i mean because i'm such an introvert it's just weird like we always always click and vibe with those people the best but like when we're out it's hard for me to you know kind of be around them because like every they know everybody everyone's going to talk to them but like and then it's just me like mm, i'm gonna faint if another person comes up to me like you know what i mean <laughs> so she's talking to people she's vibing she's vibing one thing about me like my anxiety incites silence so when i'm high anxiety i just get really really quiet you know what i mean so i'm i'm getting quiet and she's talking to other people but i'm still cool like you know what i mean just because i'm not talking i'm still enjoying myself I'm still having a good time i'm just in my head you know what I mean and you know it was a lot of people out there all types of people um and some guys started to come up to me to try to talk to me and I was just like oh no I'm with my mom I just said I'm with my mom like and for some reason I don't know why in my head that was a good excuse to turn somebody down like girl who cares if you're with your mom but to me it was like oh no I'm with my mom and then I just expected them to be like oh okay my bad but um um so some guys were starting trying to holler but i was just like no nah, i'm with my mom and for the most part you know i was just in the background you know while my colleague it was just her and i she was seeing some people that she knew and then she like she was like so when, like i said when we got there the crowd has everyone has pretty much already saw their found their spot for the parade now we're in the back i'm cool with being in the back because no one's pressed to be in the back so it's like it's a bunch of people but it's like fan it's thinned out in the back so i'm like i'm cool with being in the back she's like no i want to get in the front we're not gonna be able to see anything from back here and i'm like oh okay so she's like pushing her way through the crowd pushing her way through the crowd and it's getting a little thicker and thicker now at this point i'm thinking in my head like what if they start shooting? Anything can happen. I'm thinking in my head, what if they start shooting? I'm how am I gonna like bro, I run slow. Like, what am I gonna do? Um, what if there's they're gonna stampede me? Like, this is legit thoughts that's going in my head. Like, oh, they were just and at this time, 2019, you know, there was a lot of mass shootings. So I'm like, what if they start shooting? What am I gonna do? And also like trauma. But I'm like I'm like trying to find, you know, I'm cool being in the back where I know I could, you know, run a little fast and, and escape. But like at this point, I'm like, what am I going to do? And so, ooh, not me getting anxiety talking about this. My little leg shaking. But um, I just remember thinking, what if they start, what, if, what am I going to do when they start shooting? And so one thing about me, I always try to do an exit plan. So I'm like, looking around like oh my gosh what should i do what should i do okay i'm gonna go this but i'm gonna do that but she kept you know the person i was with she still wanted to and at, at this point this is stuff that's in my head like i'm not saying this to her you know what i mean this is like she has no idea I'm, she think i'm cool like she just she knows i'm quiet so she's like you know she thinks i'm having a good time which i kind of was but then i'm like the anxiety's kicking in i'm like they're gonna start shooting and then like people are coming up to me so to talk some guys are coming up to me to talk, and I'm, like, not here for that, really. And then also, like, people are staring at me because, like, you know, like, how do I say it? Like, you'll, 
I was, you know, we were, I was younger. So, like, younger dudes my age were coming up to talk to me. But, you know, when you're younger and your friend goes off to talk to a pretty girl, the whole group stares to see what's going to happen. Is she, is he going to turn her down? Is he, but for me, that's like, bro, the fastest thing I'm going to say, I'm going to say anything to get you out of my face. So, it's not really about whether or not I was attracted. He, some of the guys were attractive. It's not about whether or not I wanted to talk to them or not. Get out of my face. <laughs> like, get get out of my face you know what I mean so um and then that's another thing like now I'm like people are staring at me like this is weird so I lied you not like three different guys came to talk to me from like three different friend groups and like one older guy um started talking to me and he's like yeah you seem really popular are you known in this city or something and at this point I'm just like what is he talking about bro like you know but he's making conversation so at this point Honestly, I'm going to do another video about how, like, I never knew, like, men flirt in different ways, okay? I, it's a whole nother story for another day. But, um, yeah, so he's trying to make conversation. He's like, yeah, all these guys to come up to you, blah, blah, blah. And, like, he's like, you seem really, like, on edge. And I, I remember, and mind you, the, the girl was still, she was in the front talking to somebody, you know. And she's like, whenever she got more space, you know, she was going up, she was going up, up in the crowd. And she's like, um, she's, she's, oh my God, this is making me so fucking nervous. Like, why? What am I going through right now? I'm like in the house. Why am I getting nervous? <laughs> like, why am I getting nervous? Like, what, is, why am I doing that? But, um, my colleague, she's going up into the crowd where there's more people. And then she's like. I guess she's talking to people like, oh, can we stand here? Can we stand here? We just got here. We just need a better spot. And, you know, she's, like, networking or whatever, basically. And so whenever she gets a better spot, she's like, okay, come on. So slowly but surely, we're going from the place where it's in the back and it's stand out. And we couldn't see anything from back there. And she's correct. However, and then we're moving up to the place in the front where it's, like, you get a great view. But it's super crowded because everyone's literally bumping. This is post pre-COVID. So everyone's, like bumping and bumping and like they're super close and like part packing like sardines and at this point my chest is like on 10 and there's like this guy asking me all these questions like are you known in this city where are you from you know and if I wasn't if I didn't have like the anxiety that I have it wouldn't have been a big deal like it would have just been like small talk like oh da 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 for some reason, I'm watching this back, and I'm not, like, saying what I really was thinking. So, the T is, girl, the whole time he's asking me all these questions, where are you from? You from D.C.? Are you known here? I'm thinking this man plotting to kidnap me. Why are you asking questions, my brother? Why are you asking questions? So, yeah, that I was, like, nervous. And he ended up offering me a beer. And so, so I was talking to him. I'm like, no, I don't drink. And for some reason, this guy, I think he was, like, in his 30s, he had, like, this biker vibe, jet black hair, he was white, brown eyes, and um, he's in his 30s, and he, oh, he's like, do you want a beer? And I'm like, oh, no, I don't drink, blah, 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 and for some reason, whenever I say that, people are like, girl, you don't drink? You know, that's a, another thing to talk about, and so, um, mind you, I'm, he's like, how old are you? I'm 22, blah, 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 and so now I'm like, bro what am I doing and so like his group he's like hey she doesn't drink she doesn't drink at all like she's never had a drunk a, a, um, a drink before and at that time that's true like I've had drinks now but like back then I had never had any alcohol in my, in my body um and so he's like literally lying you not it's like the whole Harley Harley Quinn whatever it is called the Rough Riders whatever back again comes up to me and they're like fascinated with the fact that I don't drink and so I'm like bro like it's too many of y'all and it's hot out here and you have having a leather jacket what are you doing it wasn't even that hot it felt good but um <laughs> if it was hot I wouldn't have went then it felt good but um yeah so I'm at this point I'm getting overwhelmed I'm like oh my god and so the guy that was talking to me I have no idea what his name was biker dude He's like, I remember he said something. He's like, honestly, he, it just triggered me so deeply. 
And he's like, honestly, I was nervous to come here because of all the things that's been going on. Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Like, are you, do you, excuse me? Why would you say that? And it's, it triggered me so much because I'm like, honestly, I'm like, honestly, me too. And he's like, yeah, did you hear about this shooting? Did you hear about that shooting? And I'm like, like, so now, bro, excuse me. You know when you're afraid of something and you have anxiety about something and someone else brings up what you're anxious about, even though the anxiety may be an irrational fear or something that you're like thinking too deeply into when someone else brings it up it just makes it immensely worse so in my head i'm already on 10 but now that we're actually putting this you know from my brain into words the probability of you know something happening me being in danger has now heightened because i'm like if this is something that logically if this is something that multiple people fear happening that means it's probably gonna happen. That's what my brain was thinking. And so I'm like, oh no, I don't, uh-uh. <laughs> and so I was, um, my um, colleague, she comes back, she's like, oh, we have another spot up front. So she takes me away from them. And she's like, what were you and that guy talking about? And I told her, I was like, oh, he was just telling me like how he was nervous. Well, I told her about all this stuff like, oh, that I don't drink and all his friends were like fascinated with that and that he thought that since other people was coming up to me blah 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 and people were coming up to her too like because she has really really pretty eyes so everybody was just like oh my god and she's super friendly and she knows everybody so she's I was like since people were coming up to us they thought that we were like known in DC for some reason and she's like no 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 that's so funny that's funny and she's like oh yeah um yeah, she's like, oh, yeah, that's so funny, blah, blah, blah. And so we get closer up, but now it's, like, really, really crowded. And I'm at this point, I'm, like, fucking freaking out. I'm, like, freaking out. It's so many people. People are screaming. People are yelling. You know, people are just having a good time. There are people in trees. There are, it, was giving, it was giving the purge energy, I swear to God. Like, in my brain, everybody there was going to gang up on me. Like, all 500,000 people that were at the parade were looking for me to beat me up or something. I don't know. Like, so people were in the trees. People were like, oh, my God. Woo, woo, woo. So the parade starts now. Or, like, it's, it's starting. And the guys, the pl baseball players, they're throwing out hats and stuff. and Or baseballs. And, like, people are, like, in the crowd, like, woohoo, yeah, yeah, woo, woo. And, girl, it's not giving that. I can't do it. Like, I got to go. You know what I mean? So, at this point, I'm in my head freaking out. I'm like, bro, what, what's going to happen? Like, why are they screaming? What's going to happen? So, I'm like, I started crying. And I don't know why I'm crying at this point. Because it's not like anyone did anything to me. And it's not like, you know what I mean? I start, I realize I, I'm not, literally, I just start crying. I'm bawling at this point. I'm crying. And um, at first, my colleague didn't notice because she's watching the parade, as we came to do. And so she looks at me and she's like, oh, my God, are you okay? You okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to, like, fake the funk and get through it. And But it was just too much sensory overload, I think looking back and I don't know I, I, I can't remember I remember my thoughts going into it as far as the anxiety but I can't really remember like I can't really remember exactly in that when I started crying what I was thinking it's weird like I started I have like fog brain fog from that incident like I have brain frog, frog, brain fog from it, from it, from it, and like, it's like, so I don't remember exactly what I was thinking, but I remember her looking at me, and she's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine, so I'm like thinking, I'm thinking I'm gonna 
because in the past growing up if I go somewhere with someone or family member and I feel anxious and I feel like I want to leave I would be chastised you always fucking the function up you always this you a grandma why you want to leave you always want to be in the house blah blah but like and people will go in on me for wanting to leave or crying or feeling anxiety and that's why whenever someone wants to leave I don't care we bro if I pay a fuck I could pay 10 bands for something if I see that the person I came with is uncomfortable and they want to roll we're leaving because what's going on in here is going to be different from what's going on out there it could be the same it could be different you know what I mean so I don't care you know just me being on the you know receiving end of like wanting to leave and other people wanting to stay somewhere so she's like yeah she's like i'm like i'm like i'm okay i was like i'm okay but at this point like i had real tears in my eyes i'm like i'm okay i'm okay and she's like no like you're not okay let's go she's like no no no, we're good let's go so she grabs my hand and she like tries to get me out of she takes me to the back and she's like okay let's go this way and the direction we were going there was less people but in the parade they kept going around and coming back and it came back to a point where they came back to where we were standing and they were throwing more stuff at this point i think at first they were throwing shirts and hats initially they were throwing shirts and hats but when they come back for the second time i think that's when they were throwing the sign balls and at this point the crowd is going crazy what are you doing that for girl i lie to you not i started to hyperventilate in the middle of the crowd and i'm like screaming oh my god it's too loud (laughs) it's so not even funny like it's really not even funny like and there's a lot of shame that comes with having a panic attack in public because no one wants to be that girl who's freaking out cowering into a ball and crying and screaming and the whole crowd is just like Oh my god is she okay like that's the thing for me and you know what let me get there <laughs> let me get there so like everyone's like Woo! going you know happy and i'm like i start to hyperventilate and she was like and her name was i'm gonna call her eve because she just got that type of energy good eve energy um so eve is like it's okay it's okay try to stay calm like let's get out of here i can see this not working for you so we try to go straight straight towards out the back out of the crowd because it was less people out there but then we get over there and we see it's a dead end and we're like okay we're gonna have to go out she's like we're gonna have to go out the way that we came but the way that we came is now blocked off with crowds of people so in the front where i was at where i started to get triggered it wasn't even as many people over there than it was like at the exit essentially for some reason a lot of people were trying to i think a lot of people were coming in from the exit trying to get to where we were at so but it was you know but also people are still watching the parade so it's a lot going on and we she's in front of me she's she has my hand and she's like make room make room we got an emergency we got an emergency and i'm like crying like bawling bawling and i'm hyperventilating and man i don't know if i should say i'm gonna keep it real so there were a lot of white people out there and in this part of the crowd there were all white people and i guess it has a lot to do with erasure in dc but I didn't realize that many white people lived in D.C. until that day. But I mean, but I also think, you know what? Scratch that. I think it was just a lot of people from out of state as well. Because come on, think about it. But anyways, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's a whole bunch of white people. They're looking at me and they're also saying, you know, she's like, make room, make room, have an emergency, medical emergency, blah, blah, blah. And they're looking back and they're like, I remember this one white lady. It was a Karen. She was like, no, you shouldn't have came. <laughs> she was like, no, you shouldn't have came to a, par- a parade if you knew you was going to have an emergency. And then so my colleague was also like, she was, you know, TTG. She's like, 
what are you she's like what are you talking about she's like move she's like no we're not moving we've been standing here for hours trying to get up there no so it's like they're going back and forth at this point and i'm hearing my colleague going back and forth with this lady then i hear other people saying yeah it's no way for her to, it's no way to get out it's no way to get out and she's like at this point is one black woman and me a one black woman speaking for me and me another black woman having a medical emergency and like dead ass for real no one was trying to move out the way <laughs> like every i just remember it being all white people and they're all like no we're not moving and you know what i think it was honestly i don't think people really believed that i was having a medical emergency i think that they thought we were just trying to get their spot you know what i'm saying so like instead of really being concerned when this black woman is saying i have an emergency they're like no you lying you want my spot girl so she's going back and forth now other people are chipping in and saying she can't there's no way to get out there's nowhere to get out you're gonna have to just wait you're gonna have to wait it out you're gonna have to wait and at this point i'm like bro what the fuck? and now at this point we're in a place where it's like we're touching like it's getting touching like shoulder to shoulder type stuff you know what i mean and initially at first, when the last place, it wasn't even like, it wasn't that car. Where we were at initially when I got triggered, it wasn't even like that. Like, I still had enough space to do jumping jacks or anything. You know, it, was, it wasn't it was given six foot apart. I say two feet apart, but you know what I mean? So, but now at this point, us trying to get out the exit and everyone else trying to come in and go to where we were at, it was given shoulder to shoulder. And as soon as I heard about the six or seven person say is nowhere for her to go i remember like literally a lot of you not i've already been hyperventilating this entire time i can't even speak this woman is speaking for me and it's triggering me even more that i see that she's trying to help me and people are being resistant to that so now i'm like taking it personal like oh you bitches want me to die is that what it is just say that just say it you know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, now I'm, like, even worse. So, I'm, like, you know, you can only hyperventilate for about, I think, 15 to 20 minutes, and then it's giving faint. So, at this point, like, literally, I let go of her hand, and I remember seeing my eyes go black, and I fell back. And this random black man, power to the people, that's why... That's why this whole thing with black men don't protect black women. Sometimes I can understand that, but like literally, this is concrete ground. And I, we were by the, I think, Congressional Library. And so was, I don't know where we were, but it was a bunch of steps. And I was going to fall and crack my head wide open to bust it to the white meat and everything. You know what I mean? And random black dude runs up and picks me. And this is from Eve. Eve told me this. She's like, when you let go of my hand, you faint it. She told me this afterwards. I faint. I, it's like, it's weird. It's like right off the movies, you know, where like they have like through your eyes, you see like it slowly black out. And I, this was like, I had fainted before, but not to the extent of like slowly. I don't know. It was just weird. It was, it was different, you know? So he's carrying me that at this point, I faint. And she's screaming even louder. Don't hit me! <laughs> she's screaming at this point because, like, she think I'm dead. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she thought it was giving dead. She's like, y'all need to move out my motherfucking way. And so now a, a white woman that wasn't in the crowd at first, that wasn't one of the naysayers, a random white girl, she came from the back. She's like, oh, my God she's i remember her she was like no seriously you guys need to move she was like she's like no seriously you guys need to move this is ridiculous if anything happens to this girl you're all responsible and like they still weren't listening at this point the dude the black man was like yo <laughs> i'm in and out of consciousness so i'm pretty sure i'm missing another chunk of this story but I remember all of a sudden the black dude was like, I said, get the fuck out the way. Get the <laughs> He was like, I said, get the F out the way. Get the F out the way. Mind you, he's literally holding me. He's like, you, he's like, you got to get up. You got to, I can help. I can carry you, but 
you gotta let me help you. I mean, I wasn't as thick as I am now, child. I was still skinny. But he's like, he's like, I could carry you, but mind you, I don't know you. You know what I'm saying? Even though he's trying to help me, but I don't trust men like that. So I'm not gonna, you know what I mean, get on his back or let him carry me like a bride style. No. So he's like, walk with me then. He's like, walk with me. So we're, him and Eve, they're like telling me to get up, get up, get up, fanning me. She gave me some water. You know what I mean? A couple people gave me some water. They gave me fans and stuff while we were still in the crowd. And then all of a sudden, I just remember this black dude was like, I said, get the fuck out the way. Because they said later, they told me that you kept, like, you're going in and out of consciousness. Like, in and out. So, mind you, he was like, you, I told him I didn't want him to pick me up, like, bride style. I was like, no. I remember him asking, I can carry you or you could get up and walk and I can help you walk. Like, lean on him type stuff. And I was like, no, don't carry me. Don't pick me up. So, I tried to get up and walk. Girl, fainted again. <laughs> Lights out. Fainted again. Have no idea what happened between the second time I tried to get up and walk. I mean, I have no clue. Fainted again on the floor. Gone. He's like, at this point, he's going in. He just picks me up. He picks me up, but he's carrying me because I said I didn't want to be carried bride style. He's carrying me like kind of on his hip. It was weird. And, bro, this dude was little at that. Like, this dude was little, and it didn't give to me that he could carry me. But, you know, I don't know. He carried me out the crowd until I was able to walk. And the, and the white girl, and the white girl who was helping us, she she was so like literally she was so mad she's like people are so disgusting how can you see somebody on the ground and you're worried about watching a show she was going in and eve was like yeah that's ridiculous they saying they can't move she's like look it's all this you know we once we get out the crowd of course they're like look it was all this space right here so basically there was space but people i think like i said i think that they thought that we were just trying to steal some spots or something no i was really in there sick like you know what i'm saying but i don't know that was uncomfortable for me because like i said i had to be carried out i didn't know that man and there's something about a man's hand on my body that just makes me cringe you know what i mean especially i don't know even men that i know like my brother can't just come up to me and correct and like lovingly dotedly pat me on the head like a big brother would do because I would be creeped out but you know in that moment it's not that I didn't care I feel like God covered that part of me you know what I mean because had it not been a crowd and all that stuff had it, I just know for a fact like if a man comes to me right now and grabs me by my waist and tries to carry me somewhere yo the level of anarchy that would have been come on what are we even talking about? So I always think about that. I always think about how interesting that was. I think God just covered me in that moment and had my back. Like, girl, I'm sending you somebody who's going to help. I swear to God, like, it was so many white people around. You know, white people love baseball. They love baseball. They love baseball and hockey. And I feel like black people love <laughs> black people love football and basketball. But, you know, not to be prejudiced. I mean, we all love different things, but, you know. I'm just saying, it was giving milk and two flies, three, and a, and a gallon of milk. That's what it was giving. But the, and then the crazy thing is, the girl who ended up helping us, she knew some of the people who weren't trying to move. And they were just saying, oh, we didn't know what was going on with her. She was, they were like, she was screaming. I remember her, them telling her she was screaming early. We didn't know what was going on with her. Now, when they said she she was screaming, I'm not sure if they were referring to me because I was screaming, but I was like, stop saying, like, bro, if I'm having a panic attack, panic attack, and I'm surrounded around thousands of people, the last thing I want to hear is there's no way for you to get out. Like, you're just going to have to wait this out. No. So I'm screaming, stop saying that. Stop saying that. <sighs> I'm, yeah, I was screaming. Yeah. I mean, they're not lying. Shit. Yeah, I was. I screamed. I sure did. But I'm not sure if they were referring to me or, or Eve. 
because she was screaming, move, get out of our way. We have a medical emergency. Like, and But the thing is, she she didn't go into it screaming. She was like, yeah, it's, you, you know, she was loud. She raised her voice so people could hear because it's still a parade. But then she started getting aggressive when people were like, no, you're going to have to like. And it wasn't even like. They were just like dead ass, just like, no, it was weird. And I'm like, I hope that I just, it's weird. I, I think it's, I think in 2019, people weren't really aware of mental health like they are now or becoming aware like they are now. So if something like that was to happen now, I think that the crowd would be a bit more understanding. It would be more people like that woman who helped me and more people like that man who helped me, you know what I mean? Versus people just standing and watching. I'm pretty sure it's a video out there somewhere because there was hella cameras in my face when I kept fainting. There was hella people just watching, like, oh my god, look at her. There was hella people, like, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Like, the Black King helped me. I don't know his name since day, no idea who he was, but he helped me. He helped me out. He's like, be, he's like, be careful. And um, afterwards, um, they expected me to go to an ambulance, but. I was like, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. So after I got out the crowd, there was a group of black, young black girls, girls my age, like 22 and, uh, you know, same age. I was still hyperventilating. They sat me down. They were like, sit down. But I was scared to sit down because I thought I was going to faint again. So they sat me down and they gave me some water. They gave me like um, essential oils. This girl had essential oils. She had crystals. She's like, hold on to this. It's going to help you. She put essential oils on the back of my neck. And they, people was, you know, black people out there were praying for me. They was just like, it's going to be okay, blah, blah, blah. You don't need to go to an ambulance because, you know, the girl who gave me all the essential oils and stuff, she told me, she was like, you don't need to go to the hospital because they're not going to know what to do. And I was like, <laughs> that was foreshadowing. Anyways. But, um, so I didn't go to the hospital that day. And because I felt like, I felt so guilty like this lady wanted to come out and have fun she had nobody else to go with and I ruined it but she was really sweet about it she's like it's okay um don't worry about it you know let's just go to Ollie Charlie's let's go eat so we go eat and bro you know I'm upset when I can't eat I couldn't eat I was so upset I couldn't even eat and she's like really don't don't beat yourself up over it I still had a good time but my concern if anything happens is to make sure that you're safe like that's my number one concern and honestly I was just silent the whole time because I never had someone witness me have a panic attack and be so understanding. I usually have people, you know, telling me I'm killing the vibe, killing the energy, I'm ruining the plans. Like, my sister would say stuff like that to me, to be, I mean, I'm be direct about it. Or, you know, I'm over-exaggerating, I'm being dramatic, I'm just lying and making stuff up, I want attention. You know, I've never had someone sit down here let's go do something else one-on-one -on -one. you know what I mean I've never had someone be so understanding about it so I was so I was first of all I was so embarrassed that I fainted in front of all of these people and I think I had on a skirt so I also was convinced that my punani was out to the world but I'm sure it wasn't like come on I think I had on leggings I'm not sure but like but thousands of things are going through my head like and then the guy who helped me out the crowd, he was like, man, I'm leaving. Like, he, after that situation, we said thank you. She said thank you to him. I couldn't speak. I was still in a state of catat catatonia, <laughs> ketosis, whatever. And she, he was like, I'm leaving. I don't even want to be here no more. And I think he felt that way because the crowd was just so wild. Like, and this is why I don't like going places with massive crowds because, like, that is a legit medical emergency that I was experiencing and no one on, was on cold. So imagine if something like my rational brain was thinking of all these scenarios of someone coming into the crowd with a gun. Imagine if that would have happened. People's initial reaction is to ignore or panic in a state of crises. It's weird. Or be emotional. Like, it's weird. But um, yeah, that's pretty much my story of how I had one of my most embarrassing public panic attacks is at the national well the Caps Nationals Washington whatever um when they won the World Series and I went to the parade and it was hectic I will never forget that day um I I will never forget it like that was so embarrassing but I mean hey it is what it is honestly 
I'm surprised I got through this shot without like freaking out but <laughs> I wanted to make a, a video I have thousands of stories like that girl panic disorder is serious like I have thousands of stories like that and um the worst part of it is the pins and needles let's talk more about the symptoms so I was expecting sorry moonlight come here come here come here come here come here the worst part of it I was experiencing pins and needles <laughs> pins and needles prickly pins and needles throughout my face on my hands my hands are shaking 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 my legs are numb you know I'm hearing the conversation between you know I'm hearing a lot of people yelling but in my head it's like the audio is distorted so it's like I don't know how to explain it it's like echoed a bit um and it's also things are happening really fast but it's it feels like slow motion at the same time um yeah and I just remember being in the middle of the crowd and like so many eyes were on me like that was the worst part of it like so many eyes were on me and people were just looking some people were recording people were like oh my god people were laughing because I don't I don't know why I was gonna say because but I don't know why I guess it's funny to have a panic attack in public no it's not it's not funny if you see someone going through that your best bet honestly if you see someone having a panic attack or anything medical anything if someone was having a heart attack in the crowd or someone was anything in a seizure or anything any medical anything if a person is not acting normal or is anything going on with them your best bet is to walk the opposite direction if someone is already assisting that person as long as someone's on the phone with the ambulance as long as someone's helping that person your best bet the best thing you can do is walk the opposite direction because crowding and looking you know i think that's another reason why um i was upset because people were watching to see what was gonna happen next you know what i mean emergencies it's it's kind of like the thing where there's an accident and the cars are like on the side of the road but every car slows down to see the accident which causes hella traffic and like mm -mm, don't do that don't be that girl be the girl who drives away without having to stop or assess the damages and see what's going on it's not your car it's not you so if you see someone having a medical emergency your best bet is to walk the opposite way unless you know that you're a doctor and you can assist unless you know you're willing to you know in my example carry me unless you're here to help walk away pulling out your phone to record how dare you like that was such a total violation and whoever has that video on their phone bro i really want to look into this camera and tell you to fuck off because that's how i feel because at the end of the day you didn't do anything to help me you just pulled out your camera to record me and i have multiple video uh multiple videos that come stories i can say where i had a full-fledged panic attack and people are recording me are you dumb like that's so bizarre like when did we when did we start doing that when did we start doing that as a society <laughs> instead of actually helping someone we want to record you see someone going through something like that you want to record it anyways so that's my ted talk um so if anything happens like that you see someone having a panic attack you see someone hyperventilating you see someone wants to get away from crowds of people the last thing you should do is stand and watch you should walk the opposite way so you give that person respect of privacy you give that person respect of considering their ailments they may need air and you standing there is literally soaking up all the air which is making things worse so i'm gonna come back because i'm getting upset and i'm probably gonna go cry off camera
that you know that Got you going crazy thinking about me daily But I'm going crazy thinking about you too Yeah, I drove in the street all them nights when you eat I ain't do this for me, I did this shit for you Many times you had to give me your last Many nights you had to bring in the food You know I had to stop asking for money I know you was struggling like keep it, do what you gon' do I started shooting, that's why I loud on the block Make some low money, start stacking my guap You started asking why I'm getting this money I lied to you, started lying a lot Started getting on bullshit Late nights pulling moves in that bullshit Me and Jay was ruthless Was getting to it, they ain't know who was doing shit But this story was similar But niggas ain't know this cause niggas won't feel in us But we ain't gon' speak on them That's a whole nother story, my whole one just listen up Mom, you gotta understand I love you, mommy, and you made me a better man I'm serving niggas with the underhand I'm stacking money with these rubber bands And mind you, my underground Even though we don't talk when we do, it's a hundred sound A nigga hurt you, then I'm drama, man We gon' pull up when I'm drop a hundred, man It's a message to moms, but baby, I always try and get out of slums I love to make you smile, you know you the bomb Remember nice you made me a lot of crumbs Yeah, you want the best for me, I'm all, I know that I want the best for you, I'm trying to show that I'm stacking this cake for you, I need to pray for you Was anything for you, I'm all, you know that It's a message to moms, but baby, I always try and get out of slums I love to make you smile, you know you the bomb Remember nice you made me a lot of crumbs Yeah, you want the best for me, I'm all, I know that I want the best for you, I'm trying to show that I'm stacking this cake for you, I need to pray for you Was anything for you, I'm all, you know that